Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1 and this episode I am beginning with a new thing uh, so that we don't get too monotonous and so I'm recording live instead of uh, doing post commentary and in this case uh, this particular launch was somewhat inspired by the comments including the fact that people wanted me to change things up a little bit instead of just continuing with the construction of Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 and also a comment that suggested using nuclear now I'm not using nuclear thermal rockets right now that's obvious because you don't see hydrogen tank which would be pretty darn huge and would stick out mightily uh, but uh, I haven't designed a hydrogen tank for that purpose yet uh, so in this case we are using a nuclear reactor you might have noticed that we have uranium fluoride there and lithium and I'm gonna try out this is actually a pretty big assembly that we've got on top of this otherwise you wouldn't need the Sajita Super Heavy and uh, we are going to try out a reactor and see if it works but it's a reactor that is powering ion engines so in place of the solar panels it doesn't have to be too big to power the ion engines to be honest uh, uh, it seems like it can be pretty darn small. We only need a, even one megawatt would be overdoing it. So, but we have to see whether it works. It's one of the KSP Interstellar uh, nuclear reactors. It's a molten salt reactor. I believe that is within our technological capabilities at the moment. So that's not too bad. Uh, Size-wise, it's uh, 0.7 tons or thereabouts not including the fuel, but the fuel, the uranium is very light. So this would be one step, otherwise we're still using methane and oxygen as you can see and uh, that would be good because this assembly, this test of this nuclear reactor is meant for the supply vessel which will send additional food, water, oxygen and uh, fuel and probably nitrogen and lithium hydroxide and you know, all that business we'll send all that to Mars alongside our main mission just in case our main mission needs some uh, refueling probably some extra xenon gas as well so that's the business of this and so I mean in general nuclear reactors are pretty well shielded but uh, just in case anybody's nervous about having a nuclear reactor with uh, when we have a crewed mission which they shouldn't because we have you know like nuclear submarines and everything but you know we'll test it uncrewed before we incorporate it into our crewed designs but really it'd be a big benefit since the solar panel arrays are pretty darn heavy and the reactor by comparison is rather light also it doesn't diminish in power when it comes to distance from the sun so we will see hopefully it'll also work better with Kerbalism so that Kerbalism doesn't warn me every five seconds about the power though you know they said they've got that fixed so that's a separate thing I haven't actually added the RO configurations that are supposed to fix that so that that's my fault but we're not really doing anything that requires that right now okay core ignition And booster set. There is a lot in the fairing right now, so the lag is understandable. It's not just the reactor, there's obviously the ion engines, there's xenon gas, there's a methane oxygen tank, there's a whole bunch of business going on. Okay, fairing separation so that we can see what's going on here. So the back end looks a lot like our propulsion unit uh, from the previous Mars transfer vehicle, the first Mars transfer vehicle, except we've got these large radiator panels now. Also we've got radiators directly on this little re nuclear reactor, that's it. That's the molten salt reactor, but I'm a little bit worried because we're losing electric charge and it's supposed to be running. So, what gives? Um, maybe it'll only run when we've deployed this, uh, uh, the um, radiator panels, but 
Uh, these should be on. They they are on. I don't know. I do not understand why our molten salt reactor is not running right now and providing us with power. That's like its main job. I guess I should put some shielding on it just for the heck of it. But I don't know if that's how shielding works. I don't think we'll be able to use our ion engines, but we'll make this a test to see if this can get into orbit. It's pretty tight right now. I mean, it, it can eventually get into orbit because we can unlock this fuel and use... We've got little uh, OMS engines here, the ED3s. They don't have much thrust, but eventually, eventually they'll get to orbit if we give it enough time. Or we could just unlock the fuel and let the ED4 engine do it, but that's cheating because right now we're mounted through ion engines and there's not really a fuel feed line through that. Or, oh, maybe it needs a generator as well. Ah, uh, okay. I remember this. It's been a while since I used KSB Interstellar. It needs a thermal generator as well. That's what's the problem. This is just the reactor doing nothing, I guess? I, I don't know if that makes any sense. But, okay. Hopefully the... well, the generator is probably not that much heavier either. Okay, separation. And... Oh, I've got the Severtrons on this one. Nozzle extension. And we're all good. So, if my theory turns out right, I'll test it on the pad whether what we need here is a generator. But we'll attach a generator to the next module and see if that works out. Or do they have to be directly uh, attached to each other? I'll have to see. I'll test that on the pad off to the side and then decide. We might need to just abandon this. But if I can avoid that, I will. So if we can, we will dock a, a generator to it. Okay, separation. Uh, oh yeah, burn time of nine hours. Yeah, this, this may take a while. Okay, well, it's safely in orbit, though it's losing electric charge. Um, probably the panels on this will be enough to recharge it if oriented the right way. But let me go see about that generator and whether it was worth bringing this to orbit in the first place or whether we should have just ditched it because we need the generator directly attached to the reactor. We will see. Okay, well, it seems like the reactor does have to be directly connected to the generator based on pad tests. So we're just launching the assembly again with the generator. <laughs> Sorry about that, but uh, well, I have a policy of always showing my mistakes if I record them, uh, so there you go. So we are launching again, this time with the generator. However, I had to tuck things in a little bit close. There's a little bit of clipping uh, because I need to fit everything inside this fairing and otherwise it would clip the fairing and jostle things about. So anyway, throttle up, SAS is on and ignition. And launch. Wonder why I've got a little bit of helium and tritium there. I don't. I don't remember adding those. I. I'm sure they're byproducts of the reactor. I guess. Whatever. I mean, we haven't actually run the reactor for any. Maybe they're. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. At least we have thermal power. That's a good sign. And uh, if we bring up the KSP Interstellar dialogue, see uh, one megawatt of uh, supply for our thermal power, which was the goal. The generator adds a little bit of mass, but it's not a whole lot more mass. It's certainly much better than uh, solar panels. I also lightened up uh, on methane and oxygen so that we don't have to use the ED3 to make orbit this time, which took a long time. Okay, fairing separation. 
We're currently accumulating waste heat here because we don't have all of our radiators active, just uh, these flat ones. So we'll want to get those out soon. But again, we've got a half-filled one of these xenon tanks. That's empty of fuel. Uh, this uh, tank here, uh, oops. This tank here now has half fuel. It had a little bit more than half before. And uh, the reactor and generator are actually pretty darn heavy for their size, which you would expect. I've sort of tucked the reactor into that core, so hmm, that's a little bit iffy, but I needed to fit it into the fairing. But it says uh, 0.45 tons. I thought it was 0.7 tons, but anyway. Uh, and then. I don't know if I can even click on the generator. Uh, there, uh, that, that, there. Okay, there it is. It says 0.149 tons. So very light. I suspect that real reactors and generators would probably be heavier, but then again, they could, you know, make it uh, a little bit lighter for space purposes. I don't know. I looked it up, and uh, somebody said that a one megawatt reactor would be about 493 kilograms this is on engineeringtips.com but I don't know how correct that is wouldn't be surprised if KSB Interstellar's calculations were based on little tidbits like that from the internet okay separation and nozzle Well, we might as well get the radiators out to see if we've got some good waste heat situation here. Still seems to be accumulating. We've got more capacity, but... Okay, we are about to make orbit here. I used the VAB tool for the waste heat and thought that this amount of radiator was enough. Uh, doesn't seem to be acting that way. We'll see. Maybe the nighttime side will help. But then there are a lot of times when we're just going to be in daylight. Well, that should be good enough for now. All right. Separation. And we should bring this back down. Okay, that'll do the trick. All right. Ooh, I had that one jetting out a little bit more. Oh well. Okay, so we've still got waste heat accumulation, more than before actually. Still accumulating, even in the dark. It's going down slowly, the rate. But we probably don't need the full reactor capabilities. Let's see. Let me activate the ion engines as well. And so we'll figure out exactly how much power we need. So these are all the windows. The power radiated is steadily growing. Okay, anyway, uh, as this settles down, let's get those on. We see 300 kilowatts. And maybe we can throw down the reactor. I mean, it seems like it's below what the power demand was before. Let's give it some net power. 3.5 kilowatts of net power at 20%. I don't, I don't know if it's actually percent, maybe. Yeah, I guess that would work out. And that leaves us with only a trivial waste heat, and that should diminish over time as these things get better. I thought I... yeah, it's uh, steadily getting better at radiating stuff. Okay, and if we turn off the RCS right now, we see our apoastis is going up as it ought to. And right now we've got 9,000 meters per second here without a full tank. Well, this seems to be working out quite well. What we need now is to add more xenon gas, more pellets, more supplies, and then we'll have our supply vessel. 
we are going to put the regular old propulsion unit on the Mars transfer vehicle number two because we've already got the solar panels on it, of course. I mean, I'm tempted to add a reactor, but you know, then the solar panels will be redundant, but well, I mean, just for looks, I don't know. Should I put a reactor? Maybe I should, maybe I should build this up and put the supplies on here first, and then I'll get uh, comments from uh, viewers on whether I should add a reactor to the Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 anyway, even though it has the solar panels already, or whether we should omit that and just stick to the solar panels there. It may make things a lot easier with Kerbalism and everything, and of course allow us to run the, the ion engines at full blast at Mars. So, but then again, I, I don't like the idea of the <laughs> solar panels being redundant. We can't really scale the reactor too much smaller than this as it is, so that's not really an option. Anyway, uh, let's add stuff to this so that we have our supplies lined up. Uh, probably first uh, more xenon gas. Okay, so from here on out we're not doing anything particularly new. We're launching a xenon tank now, and so I'm going back into expedited mode with post-commentary. Uh, this Xenon tank is headed to our supply vessel, Supply Vessel 1 at this moment, and not uh, Mars Transfer Vehicle 2. Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 will have to wait on until I get word on whether we should add a reactor to it or not. Reactor and generator, of course, we have learned. And so, yeah, just a Xenon tank. Not a full Xenon tank, as you can see from the resources panel. It's only partially filled, so it's going to have to be topped off later on. Uh, the Sajita Heavy. I'm not entirely sure why I decided not to uh, just put a full tank on there and launch it on a Super Heavy, but there we are. I'm trying to minimize, uh, pretend that I have a budget of some kind, <laughs> I guess. We also have a tug there, you can see, so that we can add it on to the supply vessel. Otherwise, we don't have a tug with the supply vessel right now, so we needed to bring one up. And we'll probably need to bring up a second tug as well with the other docking port at the center line, you know, the full circular one instead of the propellant only one. And we will also need to bring up trusses so that they can be mounted on the supply vessel because they will still act as that supply vessel's orbital maneuvering system. Otherwise, we don't have any small engines on it. We'll just have the ion engines. I still consider the ion engines big engines because they're heavy. So here we are docking up and I actually don't want to separate off the stage just yet the upper stage of the Sajita rocket will still do multiple burns including the one to finalize the rendezvous getting rid of our relative velocity to the target and only after doing that do I decide to let it go and have it deorbit. I'm almost tempted to like put an uh, inflatable heat shield on that stage, but I'm pretty sure the inflatable heat shield does not have enough heat tolerance to deal with an Earth re-entry. It can deal with the Mars re-entry, but the Mars re-entry is with a very thin atmosphere and relatively low speeds. Earth re-entry takes a little bit more protection, so I don't think that inflatable heat shield will work for it. I always have ideas for how to recover stuff, but I haven't settled on anything yet, and certainly don't want to just uh, duplicate, you know, what I've seen elsewhere. Sort of thinking about maybe what would be an interesting way of doing things. But, it, but that's all off to the side and time consuming and will come later as far as I'm concerned. First, uh, let's figure out how to do the Mars part. That's more important to me in this series than any sort of recovery part. So anyway, we are launching a methane and oxygen tank to the supply vessel. And again, it's partly filled. And there we go. Also, we're carrying one of the mounting trusses for the tugs. It's actually the mounting truss for the tug that we don't have over there. The one with the circular docking port, the NASA docking port that people can pass through. Of course, we do need a tug that can handle that kind of docking port because the um, supply modules will still have to be Kerbal accessible, let's say. Even though we're not going to have a habitat on the supply vessel. 
So here we are making orbits and then we'll have all the rendezvous burns of this stage. You can see not a whole lot of spare delta V in this stage so this is as much as we can carry with it. I think another reason why I favored using the single stick Sagita and the Sagita Heavy at this point is because we're going to be seeing a lot of the Sagita Super Heavy and Super Duper Heavy once we cycle out the Mars transfer vehicle and this supply vessel to a high orbit in preparation for transferring to Mars. So yeah, I think that's, that's the logic. Stick to the smaller rockets while we can and then once we have to do all the stuff in high orbit we'll need to use the bigger ones. So here we go, just grabbing that truss first with the tug. Annoying as it is to have to deal with the little truss pieces, it's somewhat unavoidable. Could be worse, I mean a real station would require a whole bunch of these little trusses all over the place. So here we go. Oop, a little bit of a pause there. Now one thing I had forgotten is the Mephalox tank that we still have right here. I accidentally still have the RCS port clipping in with a docking port there. Same problem I had with the Mars Trans Vehicle 2 because I didn't actually change the craft file much except for add that truss to it. And of course here we're deorbiting this stage. So we had the same problem on both vehicles and I might have a Kerbal visit this one as well, just to remove that part. Uh, probably we'll have the Kerbal visit this and then head on over to the other one. So it'll be a two EVA mission for that particular Kerbal. Okay, here we are docking it all together. It's already pretty heavy, even though it's not at all fully fueled. You can see all the spare room for the xenon gas, methane, and oxygen. But uh, yeah, plenty of Delta V. We've got everything unlocked right now, so reading 25,000. Of course, it has no payload. Uh, it has, this is not carrying anything. It's all just fuels and engines. So, well, we will see how this works out for us with our new nuclear system. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.